Yes, Bitch, Yes with Tiffany, where conversation rules the nation. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Yes, Bitch, Yes. Yes. Before we get started today, I have a special guest that may be new to some of you, but very familiar to me. As a graduate of both Michigan State and Howard University, Chris you Sanford know. is also a member of Kappa Alpha Psi. He is an executive coach, leadership development expert, and motivational speaker. I do not just know Chris for his great accomplishments. He is also married to my very beautiful, wonderful cousin, Lisa, and they open their home up to me and my son every year in Palm Beach, time after time. With that, I want to welcome my cousin, Chris Sanford. Yo. Hi, Chris. What's up, cuz? What's going on? You. Happy Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. I Happy know you Sunday. were capping and all, but it's Q week in the D, so. What's that all about? <laughs> See, you tell the Qs that's the right year, wrong color. 1911 mm. is the right year, but that's the wrong color. Oh, it's color red. red <laughs> it's white. the color red, baby. Oh, my God. So did they do anything decent with it? Did they have any good food for you? Would they have chicken you know tenders and stuff like that? They actually had a decent food truck at this party we went to to celebrate my girl Trina's birthday. And my cousin Lisa is in town this weekend. So we we turned the up in LV. You know what I'm saying? You well, the D Instagram is hype right now. Did you did you go to that concert? Or did you watch that concert? I, the Central Train Station. Is oh, my God. Central Train yes. Station? Yeah, I missed it. I, the crazy part is, I'm not going to say they didn't promote it because I am always not looking at things that don't involve me. So I didn't know anything about it until I was getting text messages and screenshots on my phone from you, from my mom. Like, look at look at Big Sean. On, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Low key, um, it comes on tonight, so you can watch it. Okay. Uh, oh, it, it's coming well, on wait. again. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it was on like Paramount Plus. I'm like, no, Peacock. It's NBC, so you should see it on Channel Four. Oh, my facts wrong. Damn. <laughs> but. I was low key. Uh, I have to be honest. I was low key emotional watching that. Really? Now tell me wh why? What wh was it? The I'm you sorry. know, I think that train station uh, is emblematic of the D. Mm. You know, I forgot it to mention that Chris is from Detroit. I'm Chris from the east, the from east the side, east, east side of Drive, baby. What, what's good with it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the real D, not East Side, not not Oak Park, like my wife. I'm from the D. That would be offending people from Oak Park that they not Detroit. That's two, four, we eight. are Detroit affiliated. That's two, four, eight. I'm just saying. Um, no, I felt like it was emblematic of, of the D. You know, we went the D's been up and down. Right. And you know, you you know, you you travel and you've lived outside of the the state. Um and a lot of times, you know, we've had to defend the D. Yeah. They start like you know, a lot like, of time. I'm yeah. I stay defending Detroit. They always I mean, like, like watch your mouth. Yeah. They always oh, trying to act like Detroit don't Detroit ain't where it is. I'm like, hey, you know, somebody once told me though, uh, now it was still kind of shade, but I still respected it. They were like, Detroit is a great place to be from. And they were living in Chicago. They was like, but Chicago is a great place to live. And I was like, I I I understand that. I, I see what you're I, saying. I, I, I love know. being from Detroit. I ain't scared I, of I shit. Know. Yeah, I kind of agree. I mean, we're hustlers. I kind of yeah. agree with it because yeah. I think anybody from the crib, you can go anywhere. Like you can pick up, you can pick up the vibe. Like, oh, we in uh, we in Omaha. What's popping? What's this? What's that angle? What's this? And and we just stand out and we can make it happen. And I just think it's that that blue collar hustler mentality that we have. But Detroit. I was, you know, I was like four tough people. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we are, and we're, uh, you, you know, know, we're stylish, we're funny, we know how to dance, we know music. It's just, it's something about the career. But seeing that and seeing that train station kind of made me feel like that's us. You know, yeah. you don't, you don't been up, you don't been down, and then now you you've come all the way back full circle. And uh, I can't wait to go back and check it out. But you got to check out that concert. I got to check out the train station and the concert. And it was really cool to see people come back um, to support Detroit, like Detroit natives that have come through and made it. Detroit is born of stars. Like you come from Detroit. I, you know, I started my reality TV journey a few years ago, but watching other people that were just 
just Detroit natives get on TV and really like shine. Everybody I've seen get on TV from Detroit, whether it was a reality show or they was making a song, they blow up. I'm like, we have some talent. Like we come, we come with the with the grind like we're not going to be talking every no, time we're not gonna, yeah every time right and we're we're great with people look how many people you've met around the world now i'm gonna meet yeah. some people That's what I'm you know what i'm saying with. and you from the crib let me ask you a question real quick yes i'm gonna make a note of this are you do you hear an echo at all i don't okay all right you sound good to me too you don't have yeah. earplugs you, but you said you clicked i don't have ear headset. correct Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, does she know what it's doing? I'm just making sure I'm yeah. leave. I don't want to mess up my whip. What's the whip? What whip? What whip? Keep it here. I don't, I don't really use headphones. No, you don't need them. I know. Yeah. Man, I like the headphones, Tiffany. He said he didn't want to mess up his hair. Well, Chris, this. let me just tell you my, my objective and my goal tentatively for YBY. Why? Uh, yeah. Yes, but yeah. I love it. Um, a lot of people who know me just in a, as a public figure know me as Tiffany from Big Brother, Tiffany from The Challenge, whatever. And so, um, I wanted people to kind of get to know me as a person, know my circle, my network, um, the people who have influenced me, um, how I got to Big Brother because. Just a reminder, like, I'm not the person CBS made. I'm the person CBS wanted. So there was a, there was me, there was Tiffany before there was Big Brother. And I love to engage uh, conversations with people who also have something to add to life. There are a lot of, there's a lot of BS content out here. There's a lot yeah. of tea. There's a lot of gossip. There are a lot of opinions. But I... I learned a lot about you just in researching you and you're my cousin and I, I, I've known you. I don't, you know, I've, I've, I don't know. I've known you since I was like, yay tall. So mm -hmm. but then there well, were things didn't, that I, you didn't think I was cool back then. I think you're cool now, <laughs> well, you, but you know, I, <laughs> you're like, I don't know about them. I don't know if they, I don't know if they cool, but I we, mean, we cool. Look at all this stuff behind you. All of the you got all this state stuff, this paddle, this cap of stuff. You just books, you, books glasses, your shirt Pictures. buttoned up. You just it's you just look serious. But you know, <laughs> but you know, I ain't you know I ain't serious. But for real, but for real, mm -hmm. you cool. For real, you cool. Mm -hmm. So you too. I want to ask you. I know, Mike. Some of my people who are watching are like. Who's this person? This person not from reality TV. Because you know right. why? My circle is not just filled with people from reality TV. My circle is filled with a village of individuals who have um, allowed me to get to know them and have fueled me and my desire for ambition and motivation. So Chris is one of those people who's been instrumental in my life and um, just... It, it, I was always wondering why you always try to tell people what to do. And then when I looked up your resume, I said, oh, he a coach. You should have told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of a gift and a curse, you mm. know, coach your people. Yeah, because you, you coach people all the time. And then sometimes you don't. It's hard not to try and fix something. Mm. You know, you just have to the let fixer. people you got to let people figure it out. And that's that's tough. Yeah. Especially people you care about, because it's like, yeah. hey, don't, don't do that. Do this. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then but, sometimes people aren't always ready to be fixed. Uh, you know, most people aren't. Mm. Most people don't. You know, most people don't like. Most people don't like feedback. You know, mm. feedback is feedback. It's not good or bad. It's just feedback. It is. It's an it's an observation of what you're presenting, and it's just my relation to you of what That's i'm it. getting yeah you you do what you want with it i can yeah. say hey tiff there's there's mustard on your shirt it's not good or bad it's just it's mustard on your shirt now if so, you get com completely embarrassed that's up to you but when i was out the other night i consider myself to be a, a pretty warm person i think that detroit gets a rep of uh being hard a little bit and mm -hmm. I'm I'm genu I'm genuinely warm and I'm generally warm. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm I think I am an approachable person. So I would agree with that. Thank you. This guy uh comes up 
and he's introducing his friend and I stick my hand out and the guy, the very first thing he says to me, he sticks his hand out too and I'm getting ready to introduce myself and he says, smile. <laughs> Did that piss you off? The fuck off. <laughs> at that point, at that point, at that point, I'm, I'm intentionally not smiling. Like, what are you talking about? That's, Do you that's, just... That's, and, and he had something, the, the way you think about it is he had something on his face. So when he said smile, I said, wipe your mouth off. Wipe, your, wipe the crud off your mouth, player. Some dudes, some dudes call that negging. Like sometimes you meet, you meet dudes and they have an angle already. And so the first deal. So, okay, let me just give you an example. You're my cousin. You're a beautiful woman. Okay. Not just because you're my cousin, but you are, Period. right? You know what I'm saying? Um, that side of the family did pretty good. Um, but what a lot of times men try and do is to offset you by saying something negative to you. Right. And so it's, a, it's an art form and sometimes you don't have to do it, but I could see you and you would have on a blue dress. And I, and, and what I would do is I would say, I mean, Tiff, that's a, that's a nice dress, but that's not your color. Now, the reason for that is most dudes game is to try and, oh, baby girl, you look so good. Baby girl, you so fine. And so how many times have you heard that? A frequent you, amount of times. No, but, but a, lot of, a lot of guys think they're going to get your attention by telling you how nice they are. Mm -hmm. And what the opposite is, is it's called negging. So in a way. Negging, is this N-E-G-G-I-N-G? -G -G? Yeah, okay. negging. It's, 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 a, it's what you do to throw it's what you do to throw a woman who is used to consistently getting comments, you throw her off. And so that's what he was doing, but he didn't know he had, he had boosy, <laughs> boosy white crust in his, in his, in his mouth. You gotta have your act together if you're gonna make it. Before you try to check me, player, check yourself. Mm -hmm. Worry about yourself. I mean, yeah, so, so just... what that tells me, he was intimidated by you. Because I would have just said, hey, nice to meet you. How are you? What's going on? What you drinking? You want to drink, boo? All right. Cool. Smile. Smile. You, you going to tell Smile, somebody. bitch. Smile. You, who do you think you are, little Duval? You just met me. Yeah. That's what that is. That was interesting. It just, that, yeah. just, that just popped up in my head. So, I, so I, did, did, let me ask you this. Did, mm -hmm. did he come back around? Was it full circle? Did y'all end up he can't, did y'all end up doing the cha-cha slide? Nah, because um, his friend is interested in me, and he knows that. And his friend was interest in introducing us. And that was his, you know, smile. And I, I do feel like he really thought he was doing something because I I know that I know that Detroit women are not always the warmest. And so we do come off like when I was ordering my drink and the girl was like, what you want? I said a tequila. <laughs> that's her, what you, that's her clientele. What, that's what you not... want? What you what you and what you want? And, and I mean and not in the she wasn't even trying to be mean. She was just like, okay, what you want? I'm like, okay, let me get a tequila <laughs> on the rocks. And, All right, what you want? Would you, you want a lime like, too? She like, she like, she like. This is the this is the arena I'm in. What you yeah, want, she, I'm I help, I'm I'm helping you, aren't I? You yeah, know what I'm saying? You, you want a drink? I'm giving you said yeah, drink. Yeah. What, what you right? want? And so mm -hmm. I think that he pegged me instead of negging. I think he pegged me as one of those chicks. But you he, also, but you also were at a cute party. How you know I was at a cute party when I said when this happened? It's all my business. <laughs> You had a cute Te party. Technically, so, I was. That's so, so what you, checking. What'd you expect, huh? I'm like, oh, bad. I got some good cues out there. I'm just messing with you. I'm Y'all like, everybody it. in here is not, you know, everybody in here is not a B word. Everybody yeah. in here is not like and that. Not, and you know what? It's tough. I, I feel, you know, I feel, I'm happy I'm not out there. I know, you know, I know there's a ton of single people out there. But the game is wild now. I would, I could not do it. I could not do it. I would probably low key if I was single. I would be on one of them dating apps. You said you would be on one of them dating apps. Yes. You know what? I don't. I don't think so. Listen, I went I know on a lot of people. I know a grip of people that are, 
you get all you get all the small stuff out the way. It's like, oh, I like you like it's Game crazy. of Thrones. You like tequila. Come come say hi. Tr Trina saying hi to you, Chris. Who in here? What's what's <laughs> up, Boo <laughs> Lady? Yeah, oh, you smell good. You, know, you smell baby? like flowers. You, she, she, you, you still, you still beaming off the cue party. Not beaming off. The, here, you gonna have to sit. You gotta sit down. You gotta put that thing down. You can't sit. Oh my goodness, put that thing down, sugar. What's wagon sugar? wheel. She got a wagon wheel. <laughs> hey, I like your hair. Oh, thank you. Girl, don't tell him <laughs> that. Don't, don't tell him you. that. He's all. It's a new what's, look. What's oh. going on with you? Hey, what, wait. Was it your birthday? Yes. Happy birthday! Thank you. Oh my goodness! Hanging out in his deep. He ain't putting no headphones on. Y'all look good together. Thank you. This is my baby. Yes. For those of y'all who don't know, if you haven't been following and keeping up, <laughs> this is Trina. This is my bitch. Okay, we go all the way back to Nick Nack, yeah. Patty Wack, give a dog a ball. And let me tell you, she a real one. We done been, we done been in some dark corners. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Some yep. dark corners. <laughs> <laughs> don't nobody know about nobody. the dark corners. <laughs> we done bent them corners and we made it out. We Gemini. Sure did. We sure did. Gemini. Oh. I'm full of oh. I'm I'm full of Gemini's. <laughs> Chris, I can't get rid of them, right? You why they, can hey, you? It's like it's like it's like once they get their talons in you. Not talent. <laughs> They, you they, mean they're warm. They in there. What every, every Gemini, I, I know I can't get rid of them. Thank you. Warm hug. My wife, Ty. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, Chris. Which, we don't what understand. What's Chris inside? Girl, hold on, wait. We go, we go, we go. We about to bring it up right now. Okay, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, Give her half of it. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah. Oh. There we go. There we go. Y'all like y'all look like y'all watching a cheap movie on a spirit flight. Oh what? The, no, I, I just think so. I just really want to say <laughs> not a cheap movie on a spirit flight. Yeah, but Trina like looks like she's taller than me. I'm about to tell her business. Know. She's about to be so mad. Me and Trina, I'm technically taller than Trina. No, she's not. But no, Trina booty is so big. She's sitting up higher than me. It's like sitting on a pillow. I'm yeah. a little. I'm a little that's jealous. A real, right that's now. a real B booty right there. Okay. That's a B booty. Chris is a Sagittarius. Okay. Yes. Uh oh. What say what you say? Say what you got to I, say about him. I have nothing to say about no, Sagittarius. No, you guys what? are good people. They well, I'm oh. a good one. It depends on where you at. If you closer to Scorpio, you can be a little wild, but I'm closer. I'm November 30th. <laughs> you like that don't mean nothing, boo. <laughs> It really doesn't, but you crazy. You can have it. Yeah, you're crazy still. You, should, I, you for sure. In a good way, though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look at y'all. Look at all here on a Sunday. <laughs> look at us. Y'all going? Y'all going to Belle Isle after yeah. this? Going to Belle Isle. Y'all going cute, to the Rooster it Tail? Picnic. It's a cute picnic today. Is it? Oh, what is up with the cute? What yeah, is this cute weekend. weekend? It is their weekend. Look at him. He, he well, did y'all meet any? Did y'all meet any nice cues? No. See? Okay, there you go. No. We would have met some nice Kappas if it was Kappa weekend. Um, you could have. You you probably have a higher percentage of meeting a, so, a meeting a man of higher ilk. You know what I'm saying? So Trina, you came at the right time mm -hmm. because Chris was saying, like, he's glad he's married, and I know he is because my cousin is the best wife. Love he would have ever found. Hey, 22. It'll be 22 oh years this year. God bless you guys. 20 that is amazing. So this is great for That's you That's a long all. time to be dealing that with a red bone. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You no, see this? This used to be black. That's a long time. Thank this you. That's a black. long time to deal with that. Mm -mm. A red bone? What about? What, what, what? I, need, I need a trophy back here. This is just Sag coming out, just so you right. know. So Chris said, hey, about to bring it back Chris back. said if he was ever if he ever was single, he was like, in this today's age, if he was single, he would be on the dating apps. Trina is single. Yeah, I'm well not. I, See, I don't dating apps. I mean, I just personally don't yet. I mean, not okay, to say I won't so, ever, and I don't knock anybody who does, but I just not comfortable. So but but see, I feel like, okay. Where you I remember that old club, the stockyard? I used to hate that place. Remember that? No, that's for old people. Yeah, we don't know that. Football. That's right. That's for our time. Oh God, I'm, I'm halfway in our, with, in our generation. I'm dealing with some borderline millennials <laughs> here. My bad. Uh, yeah. So you got. My, I mean, uh, St. Andrew. But, yeah, I don't, don't want to meet no. I don't want to meet no. I don't want to meet no sweaty woman that's been doing that's been doing the the hustle, and you know it's like Thank that. So it, 
I'd rather, I'd rather. You don't rather want to meet a sweaty woman that's been doing the hustle. Now, what you have to start? Have to start your art. No. So I you know. just saying you don't want to meet somebody at the club. So where do you? No, you, you correct. And so, if not the club, I don't go to church. So then I'm gonna have to meet somebody. It's like somebody's gonna have to set me up. It's mm -hmm. gonna have to be like, oh, Trina, yeah. this your girl. So it's gonna be like that. Yes, and so it's the next thing. best thing to be like, okay, looks, okay. Likes Game of Thrones, likes tequila, first voting, all, voting first occasionally. First, first of all, are you a Jon Snow right. advocate? The, so, so like of course. Game, okay. Okay. Then we of can course. be friends. Then we can be friends. Yeah. Gotta, I just, I just started friends. watching uh, House, of Dragons. House of Dragons again so I can get my act together. But as okay. soon as it came on, it was like everything came back. I got to go back and watch season one because season two was coming out. I haven't seen it. That's my oh, you'll love it. I think in July, maybe. Yeah. So you got time. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying? And so now I got a bunch of friends. And uh, I think I think the one that they go to, where's the one where the woman makes the choice? I think it's Bumble. Oh, Bumble. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like you get on there and then the woman has to take oh, the they lead. Have to click you. Now, what did you say? You said the one you go to. No. One of the apps. That's what I'm saying. One of the apps. Uh, that's, oh, that's one of the ones you. They one of the apps. But this one, one this one is like the dude. The dude can't because every cute, every cute chick, the dude is gonna be like, yes, right. yes, 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 yes. Right. But this one is the girls. They have to like you. Advantage. Well, I'm always gonna be the one choosing anyway because I see the men online and they just a different kind of handsome than I prefer. Okay, so if, so if they catfishing, like if you they are catfishing. You know what I mean? Like you got a picture and you just like I don't know. Somebody tried to scam fish me. Look at Chris on the Yes Bitch Yes podcast. Look at me on the Yes Bitch Yes podcast. <laughs> Girl, I didn't hey, know. This East Outer Drive's, hey, hey, this East Outer Drive's, hey, East Outer Drive's finest right here. East, East Outer Drive on the K. Pelzer's Liquor Store. What up, though? Okay, rip your hood. So, th that's my point. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, y'all went out. Y'all met some dusty cues. I'm done. Y'all back. And now y'all gonna go back again for a picnic. Girl, you know, the cues, they, they, some of them was moving kind of, it was like a, it was like a dodgeball game. All the guys were on one side and all the girls were on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so You know what that tells me? Okay. Some just... uncomfortable some uncomfortable men there. I see, I seen some video. And there was a lot of nice looking women. You gotta get yourself up in that mix. Right. Quick. You gotta get in there, you gotta throw some drinks around. Well, they was happy to see each other. They was happy to yeah. see each other. Maybe they were a little... <laughs> They were slapping each other on the ass and everything. <laughs> Watch out now. <laughs> Watch out now. <laughs> I ain't gonna trip. I, mean, I ain't gonna trip. He got slapped on the ass so hard, he hey. didn't even turn around. <laughs> he was like, mm. I said, I would have been mad. I was offended. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna trip. We we got some ass slapping in my frat too. See, what's but... up with that? Okay, tell us the behind the stories. Y'all not playing football. Why are you doing this? Is it fun? Um, people, well, like well, back in the day before, you know, there used to be a, there used to be a lot of physical activity for you to get into the frat, okay. if okay. you if you will, right? So things that aren't sanctioned. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of underground things that happened to make sure that you were tough and about it and made right. Okay. And so sometimes um, some groups don't ever get away from that, so they always want to keep putting their hands on you. Ah. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got that paddle back there. That's that paddle. And that's pole mark. That means I was president. Oh, you was beating the crap out of right. Oh, I didn't not not pause. Mm -mm. <laughs> I mean, you was just making sure everybody was staying in place. Yes. It, let me tell you something. It is not easy running a group of cock strong college dudes. That's the that was the out of every job I've had in my life, trying to manage a chapter of men from Michigan State was by far the hardest thing ever. Because everybody thinks they the man. Chris, every every position or every organization you, not I won't say every, but it seems like when you get involved in an organization, you find your way at the top of that organization. 
like, is that just something about your personality or is it something people recognize in you and they want you there? Or is that like your goal when you. It, it's not my door? goal, but I can't keep my mouth shut. That's the problem we talked about <laughs> earlier. I can't. It's like if something stupid is happening, I'm like, I'm like we need to fix this. Okay. And then then I'm just a straight shooter. I'm just like, hey, what you know, what are we doing? Mm. Is that what we're going to do? And then that kind of changes the landscape. And then people be like, hey, uh, I kind of agree with you on that. Mm. And then Chris that's like, how okay, it. So let me do it. Let me do it. All right. Move over. <laughs> yeah, let me do it. And they be like, well, I think I like what he's doing. And then that's that's how I don't want to, you know, I would rather be in the background as long as somebody that's capable. And if there is somebody that's capable, I'm happy. Like, I'm happy to squeeze mustard on a on a glizzy you know what i'm saying i'm i'm happy to do that i don't have to be you know alderman davis up in the mug every time i guess you know what i'm saying so yeah that's life though but you like that too it's the same as you it's no different from you you saw some wild shit happening you was like let's 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 create the cookout and see to me Oh, I don't think it's a me thing. I think it's a D thing. That's yeah. that's D. That's the D yeah. in you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You galvanize them people together. We galvanize each other together. I just came yeah. up with the plan. I made sure we but have. That's way, the same. That's the same there. thing. And then yeah. who did America love? So they say. So that's it. It's the same deal. Now you you know good as I do. You know you got haters out there right. always. Yeah. yeah. But if you ain't got no <laughs> <Tell the> training. <laughs> If you ain't got no haters, then you ain't doing something right. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't got no haters, you not doing something right. And it's not that you're trying to make haters. It's that when you are doing, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're doing it well and you walking in your favor, people are just not going to like that. They They're haven't not. found their way. They don't understand how you did. You're moving along. You're excelling. You're growing. You're developing. They see it. The darkness runs from the light. They just don't. They, they don't like it. So that's just and, hate. that's what hating is. And, and, and you know what I like to say? I used to say this: If you don't like Chris Sanford, you don't like yourself. Because mm. I, I ain't put that in my. I'm, I'm not coming at you. I'm not coming at you. I'm one of the nicest people. That mm-hmm. want the best. For, I'm I'm the type of person that when something good happened for you, I'd be like, yes, I want mm-hmm. some of that energy. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. But you now, only are. So I used to say that, like, if you, what happens is, is people look at you. They see the good happening in you, but then they look in the mirror and they don't like what they see, and then that's the first place where the hate comes. It's like, look at you traveling and being up in these spots and mm. meeting these people. And I'm sitting here eating these cold wings. You know what I'm saying? So that, <laughs> so now they like, so that's where the hate oh comes from. God. And now the internet, the internet has changed everything. There's full-time haters. Yeah. Yeah. That's their job. They wake it, up. It's and sad. I'm not one of the people in the comments. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. But then every now and then somebody will post something and then I'll be like, I'll do a case study. I'll be like, oh. You riding without a seatbelt on. Let me see how quick I can look in the comments and stuff. So, and it's like, oh, you ain't got no seatbelt on and that baby in the back and this. And it's just like, we've just become this negative first environment with the internet. Yeah. That sucks. So now everybody you got is even, the police. You got <laughs> even told. more. It's people that want to look at your deal and be like, them lashes ain't it, honey. Mm. Yeah, so it sucks. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks. And that's why you people like you have to have thick skin. You know what I'm saying? Period. You yes. you because the they don't be on there. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean they say everything to me. I'm granny. I said first of all, if I'm granny, bitch, I'm great. I'm the great <laughs> granny. You gonna call me great you, grandma? Great. What? What would make them call you granny? Oh, I'm old. You didn't know I was old. They, you um, ain't old. What is what they say? I'm just telling you what they mm. say. I'd be like this. Post a Who's picture of your that? mama. Do a side by side with me and your mama. Do a side by side with me and your mama. Not even your grandmama. I know I'm a grandma. Y'all call me grandma. But since I'm so grandma, post a picture a side by side with me and your mama. No. Yeah, but, you're not going to do that. Y'all look like y'all was having a good time now tonight. I wish I was there. We turned their party out. 
I don't even think nobody knew now, it see, was a cue party. How you gonna turn the cue party out? <laughs> That's whack. Cues, it was so Detroit funny. cues, get your shit together. <laughs> it's going viral. These these <laughs> no, these <laughs> women, these girls should be geeked up. Talking about, I'm going to meet with such and such today. Did y'all get any numbers from that party? I did, uh, but it was oh. to be. From, it was for business. It was for business. He was like, "Tell me about the phlebotomy business." Oh. Oh. <laughs> can you take my blood? <laughs> okay. Huh? Can you? Can but you? then when I was like, the service comes with a price. Like it's not free. They was like, "Oh, never mind." Oh, okay. <laughs> Your patients pay for that? Yeah. Of course. I, I go where the money is. So y'all going on some cute boat ride today? No. Hmm? No. We are going to brunch. Yeah, we're going to brunch. You got to get yeah. our stuff together down there. Yes. <laughs> so, See you, Chris. It's good seeing you. I love Lisa. You too, babe. Miss you. When I come home, we got to connect. Yeah, we got to hook up. We got to definitely hook up and hang out. All right. See ya. Bye, everybody. <laughs> I just kicked Trina she, out. She, she said, All right, Trina. I like her guest like hosting with you. Like... <laughs> Gemini. Gemini, like, you know, I don't even like talking to people. <laughs> but see, she like me. That's that's, that's, that's good. good. When the Geminis like you, that's a real deal. Uh, they love me, so I know I'm a real deal. Now, I got a question for you. Yes. And it may require you to think. You may know it right off the top of your head. Or you may be like, damn, Tiff, that, that, I, I don't know if I'm prepared to answer that question. It is personal. It requires a little vulnerability. But I think you are someone who has shared a lot. And I want to get more into what you do because I'm very curious myself about why you have the criteria to um, coach. Not necessarily yeah. that you're educated, but like... Yeah. How, how and, and you're not just a coach, like you're a successful coach. Your resume was so impressive. I was like, I'm just going to, he's just going to tell us. But my question for you is, can you share with us um, something that you are, that, has, that you are personally proud of throughout your life and something that has disappointed you in your life? Proud and disappointed? Yes. You're, you're one of your greatest accomplishments yeah. and one of your greatest <clears throat> disappointments. I think, I mean, honestly, I think one of my greatest accomplishments is, is getting married, being a father, and being a dedicated father and, and, and husband, right? Like, I used to tell you and <clears throat> Sherry this all the time. I used to be like, if I wasn't a good dude, you guys wouldn't come visit. You Absolutely. wouldn't spend your money to come and yeah. be like, I'm going to stay longer. Yeah. And change generally, <laughs> would you say change our flights to stay? Hey, change your flight. We geek. Lisa mad though. Um, I'm like, yeah, y'all stay. She'd be like, yeah. it's time to go. Um, I I'm most proud that I can create a space um, and be a black male that people want to come to. Okay. Right. Like, I'm happy that I am a role model for people, young kids. Uh, family members that you can come and be like, oh, I, you know, you just, you just brought Nicole here. That's, yeah. that's my peeps now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like <clears throat> being in a situation where you, cause you could be like, oh, well, my cousin down here, but her husband's an ass. This you is know? very true. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So you, we take that type of stuff for granted. Cause there's tons of places that I grew up wanting to go to and be like, oh, that's straight. But is that person going to be there? Yeah. So. Being a, being a provider, I think, is the most proud. I think um, I think the area of opportunity is I talk a lot for a living, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to I have to pour myself into people, and there are constantly people that call me on a daily basis that want things fixed, okay. right? So there's there are people who I coach, and that's my job is to be like. You know, they'd be like, I got three options. Which one should I do? And then why? Okay. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, let's, let's walk that through. So that's, that's a lot of work. So I think my regret is the fact that once I work so much, I don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. And so I don't talk to a lot of my family back in the, back at the crib as mm -hmm. much as I could, or mm -hmm. I would like to, Okay. you know, so it's like a lot of people don't 
I don't talk to them until I come home. And it's like, oh, it's two hours. And then I'm like, well, I want to go because I want to go do what I want. I want to go see my friends. Mm -hmm. And then you have these aunts and uncles that are used to you being at their house all day, spending the night. And 50 year old, 50 year old Chris can't spend all that time with you. <laughs> so, it, you know what I'm saying? It, it sucks a little bit because I'm like, I love you. Yeah. I, you know, and I tell people this, the phone rings both ways. So once you get, I'm 50, so I'm not, I'm not a 15 year old nephew no more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you want to holler at me, holler at me. You can text me, you can email mm -hmm. me. You I'm going to get back me. to you. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> I think that's, that's one of those. And I don't know if it's a survivor's remorse type deal, but it's like, I'm, I'm living in Florida and I'm running multiple businesses. I'm a full-time dad, husband. And then you're like, man, I haven't talked to my aunt in six months. Yeah. My favorite aunt, you so know? It's funny that you said that, like, um, me and Lisa were having a conversation last night. I want to tie it in. Um, about uh, just having people connected to, to us, us that have this gift, uh, this gift, and they have they have many, people have many different gifts. But we were talking about just like uh, some people have that gift of calmness, like their the energy that we possess, and that they share with us, and us being so grateful for having that. And so when you were saying like you know I talk to a lot of people, like talking is so generic, but what you're really doing to me it sounds like is you're sharing your gift, your your gift that you were blessed with that you're here for. You know mm -hmm. you're it's not talking, it's mm -hmm. transparency of energy because you're changing yeah. someone else's life, and they're coming to you like a well, and they're getting something. You know, I, and then you, when you say that you, that you get home or you get to your yourself and you've got a um you, it's time it's like your job now not a job in a in a, in a bad way but it's like right. this is where i owe my my energy to mm -hmm. i'm almost like i don't have any more right now i'm, I'm, I'm like i'm depleted you, i you know you ever see the movie the green mile so not long 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 time ago. okay you remember that big dude and, and basically all, about, all the flies was coming yeah, out right? that's it and yeah. i tell people hey stop green miling me because <laughs> They, people want you to suck the pain out of there. Yeah. And that's what my mom, it, what was my man's thing? I'm dog tired, boss. Dog yeah. tired. Yeah. And he sucked all of the, the, the funk out of there. Yeah. And he took it in. And so sometimes, even you as a leader, because you got people, I see it in you, people are calling you for advice and trying to get on and make money or let's do this and what's our next deal? So they're looking to you to lead. And so a lot of times people come to me, they're looking to fix it. And so by the end of the day, you are ripped. Yeah. And so in your private life, that's why you have to find people, like you were saying, who are going to fill your vessel. Yeah. Right. And that's, and so then that makes your, you know, outside of work, that makes your circle shorter. Yeah. Cause you got some friends that are great for going out. Mm hmm. Right? Then you got some friends that are great for like giving you great advice. Mm -hmm. And so then that circle, you're like, okay, who, who do I want to spend my time outside of work? And so the circle keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. And then the people look at you like, I'll never hear from you. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. I love you all, but it's only a couple hours in the day. Yeah. And then, you know, Tiff, a piece of that too is you got to make sure that you don't you don't try and fill your vessel the wrong way. Explain that. Yeah, just because you can be like, oh, this what do people do? Oh, it's a tough week. I need a I need a double shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? That's yeah. not yeah. That's yeah, that's like, not I, it. I need to replenish my energy by grabbing a drink, but that's I not need it. to replenish my energy mm -hmm. by grabbing a double Glen Glen Levitt. Yeah, no. really I need to go visit my aunt who hugs me, who loves on me, who if, I can what I told Lisa. <laughs> If you need to cry, you can cry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you need more of that. And I, I've seen a lot of people in our generation that are on the same tip. But if you're not focused, then you'll just be like, you should. It was a long ass week up in this bitch. Well, you know, some people don't know yet that they are 
giving their energy away and that they need it replenished. Some people just think they're tired. You're not tired. You've shared so much of you Mm -hmm. that you need to be replenished. And just because you think you need to wake up, it's not coffee you need. It's not a shot you need. You need your energy. You need it. You need it replenished. And and we find we get that in other people like Lisa K had to come here and like sit with people and talk to them and touch them. And I was saying how like I know we can transfer energy. My energy is transferring to you and you're transferring to me right now. through right. this, And you're all the way in California or someone can call you. And this is a this is a great example of how it, simple energy is transferred. You can be having the time of your life. You can be having the best day and then your phone will ring and you will answer it and someone will say something <laughs> to you you they will dump onto you oh my god i can't believe this girl let me tell you something you sitting down such and such and blah, 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 and then you like and then you like and then you get off the phone with them you get off the phone with them you feel so heavy you're like wow i can't even believe that they told me that it changed your whole shit and guess what that person feels great now they feel so much better you get a text they're like oh my god thank you for listening to me Mm. i really needed that i feel so much better i can go on with my day now and you Uh sitting there with their burden you you got that you know there's a term for that it's called trauma dumping Mm. so you've got people who trauma dump and they'll just and so listen everybody has a time and a need to trauma dump The key is to ask the recipient, is this a good time? That's the key. key. Hey, Tiff, I need to talk to you real quick. It's kind of wild. You got a second. It's some trauma. And then you could be like, oh, I'm on a podcast. Can I call you back? Or I'm walking. I'm walking on a college tour with my son. Are you? And that's my key. Is everybody alive? Is everyone okay? Okay, I will call you back and then I can get myself prepared for the conversation. And yeah. so we have you have to list out your your known trauma dumpers. Yeah. And then you have to preface to them, hey, just give me a just give me a second. Yeah. It's a crazy day for me as well. Yeah. Can I call you back? And so trauma dumping is is huge. Um, and so for people like you and me, we have to protect ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's one of the one of the main things that I teach in in my coaching is meditation. Mm. And so meditation. Okay. Who in there? Katrina. Um, tell her pour me a drink. Okay. Um, it, it's meditation, Tiff, and mm. and so it's like sometimes I meditate five times a day for like two minutes at a time. Right. That's, you know, I think that's amazing. And I love that you said that you said that you're not saying I I go and meditate for an hour and then it's discouraging to people who want to meditate, but don't have the capacity. Yeah. But if you can just give yourself and they're like, well, what is two minutes to you're not giving yourself any minutes right now. So two minutes is better than the zero minutes that you're not giving. Yeah. And, and if you, if you're guilt written, I see this a lot in my, in my, my, you know, my women clients that I have, most women have been raised on guilt. What does that period. mean? Tell me, sure. what do you mean? Yeah. By so that? like you're guilted into things. Oh, you're not going to come see me. Like it's almost like a pledging. Oh, you're not going to come see me. Oh, you're not going to do this. Or you're not going to like, and I see that even with the larger fraternities and sororities, like with men, it's like, okay, we done. We all men. Mm-hmm. That's it. Don't, once I've crossed and finished, I'm a Kappa. Mm-hmm. The women, it's still a major hierarchy, mm-hmm. right? And it's just like, ooh, such and such. Ooh, I'm in trouble. How are you a grown woman and you're going to get in trouble by somebody? Mm-hmm. Period. Right? I don't so, believe in that. <laughs> so you have yeah. that. But yeah. then you also know this. You know about mom guilt. Yeah. Mom guilt is real. And so yeah. we talk about it's taboo. And a lot of times I have to preface it not to offend people. So you walk around with a ton of guilt already. So there's times when your body is absolutely like, you don't get sick a lot, but the last time you got sick, you probably ran yourself into the dirt. Mm. 
You feel me? Mm -hmm. And it's like a lot of that. It's like you should be in bed, but the mom guilt. And that's why to me, you know, there's a bunch of pictures up here behind me. The best workers I've always had have been women. Yeah. They outwork men. Yeah. Partially because of guilt. Oh, damn. And, a, and, and necessity. For sure. You know, it, and I mean, women are just wired differently. But my point is, is they'll also get burnt out. And like you said, have no idea that, like, you know, it's like this. Oh, so, some people get on the hamster wheel, as I like to say. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, Christian's got soccer and he's got baseball. And he's like, that's too much. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't, you can't run on that. You know what I'm saying? So there are some people who are, they're just living the life, but they're living a life of guilt and they stressed out. And then that's how you, you know, you get poured into the crib on a Sunday after brunch. Okay. But how do you get out of that mindset? Like, what are things that people, like, what is something I should tell myself? Like, what's something I can say to me when I, acknowledge because I will I may know that I'm too tired and I'm exhausted but I still got to like how do I tell myself you know what without feeling selfish because you're right when I want to take time to me it yeah. will just eliminate the what I because I'm just going to drive myself into the ground if it's something to do for my son because I'm a single parent so if I don't do it who's going to do it but even in my regular daily life i'm burning the candle at both ends i both feel ends. very selfish saying i can't I, I need a minute for me yeah well the first thing you could do is um just like everything else right we we had this podcast it was in the calendar mm -hmm. right so you have to look at you have to you have to, just like you have to, you have appointments that you have to make, you have to make appointments for yourself. You're going to make an appointment for your nails, for your hair, especially from the D, you'll get a hair, you'll get your hair done, you know, nails, whatever. Some women make appointments for massages, but yeah. you have to make appointments for yourself mm -hmm. for me time. Mm -hmm. And Put then you have to. So, so you have to, it's just like anything else. You got to monitor it. You want to save money. You got to be like, oh. I got paid today. I'm gonna I'm gonna move five hundred dollars here, right? And so, if you don't see yourself checking the box on me time, like something for your, it it could be walking around Somerset by yourself, you know, going having a solo drink by yourself. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't do that, then you have to look inside yourself and say, "Oh, I haven't I haven't booked any time for this." So that's the first step. And then the second step is just to recognize when you stressed out. Yeah. And so most people, I've got friends that have been like, oh my God, my kids are going to hate me. And I'm like, no, they ain't. They don't be fine. Right? Tell them no, we're not doing that. I had some friends, I had some friends that bought, um, they rescued some dogs. <laughs> they, they rescued a dog. Okay. Okay. They rescued a dog. The dog was wild as hell. Okay. And they rescued the dog because their rich parents wanted to pay for a dog for them. And they were like going anti mm -hmm. and they were like, we're going to go rescue a deal. And so then they went and they went and put it on Facebook. Like I did a thing. Yeah. This dog was wild. And I used to tell them they're white. And I would go over there and the dog would be growling at me. And I used to be like, this dog needs some diversity training. <laughs> so they got a kick out of that. That dog was racist as hell. And so Back then, so, uh, so then the dog is wild. Yeah. And I'm like, so what do they do? They double down and go get another dog to like help that dog out. Woo. Change that their whole house is stressful, normal, normally peaceful people. These dogs is wilding. I'm seeing them different. And I told them, I was like, y'all know y'all got to get rid of these dogs, right? Oh, now they And they can't. were like, the kids are going to hate us. And I was like, they're going to hate you even more because this is tearing your family apart. And that's just the straight shooter in me. Yeah. Maybe a month later, we go over, those dogs are gone. And those people are doing great now. And then they eventually, they eventually 
gave in to their parents. Their parents paid for like a, you know, some type of $25,000, $3,000 cockadoodle cock or whatever. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but those people, they were going to die on the sword. The mom was going to die on the sword yeah. because she thought her kids were going to get mad because they gave the dog to her. So you got to make tough decisions for yourself. Yeah, making tough decisions for yourself, even if it does have an impact on someone else, the overall effects are greater of a benefit than the struggle and the stress that we're causing by trying to spare somebody's feelings. I, I've i moved my family, I don't know, six times. And people used to shame me for it. Ooh, you moving again? Well, yeah. For somebody who's never left the crib, that seems crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But this is opportunity. Did it stress my family? Yes. Did it stress my wife? Hey, we went someplace new all the time. Single mom, I'm working, I'm gone. That stuff was stressful. But it's <clears throat> it helped us to grow. It helped us to, to gain experiences which all led us to where we at now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that, and now that's created some amazing times for our family. Did you know? Like amazing time. Last time you came here, you didn't even leave the crib. I never try to leave the crib. Like that's <laughs> my whole, I'm almost, I, I pray that y'all, and I, I don't know if y'all know this. I pray that y'all don't ask me to go nowhere when I get there, I love coming to Florida. I've every time I come, I film, I take pictures. Y'all have seen the same pool and the same mm -hmm. backyard in the same kitchen. When I go to Florida, I love it. It is my. I told Lisa when she came here because I'm. I y'all y'all will see me in two different lives. When I come to your house, I probably seem like a person who has not a damn thing to do, ain't got no responsibilities, obligations, don't want to do nothing because I can come <clears> to your place and relax but you so see me here you see me like doing, a chicken with a head cut off but but i'll be honest the last time i stayed at your place i loved it that's the same thing that lisa says very peaceful it's it's the same thing for us it's you know we run like a bed and breakfast in this joint mm -hmm. and so it's nice right. to go someplace else <laughs> yeah. but in actuality you're doing what what we're talking about you come here and you like i rip and run for a living you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, what Tiff doing in D.C.? What Tiff doing in Cali? So you rip and run for a living. So when you come here, you're giving yourself that. Like, oh, I'm going to have a book. I want to oil myself down. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I want to go lay out. I want to pour some tequila in a beer. You know I'm, what I'm saying? I'm going to yell from the backyard. Lisa, you need me hey, to help you with anything? You need me to help you do something that I hope you uh, don't ask me to do? Please say no. I'll say yes. Scott, just say yes. So, so that's it. And I mean, to, I hope I answered your question, yeah. but the last thing, the, the last thing is also to like, um, is recognize where you at. And sometimes, um, I use this analogy. You, you've seen Shawshank Redemption. Do we talk about this? one of my favorite movies. So Shawshank Redemption, the best part about it was when Andy got in the shit tunnel. OK, mm -hmm. so Andy knew that this was his way out. Mm -hmm. And you know, my good friend, Andy Dufresne, Andy Dufresne. You know, had to crawl through six football field. You know what I'm saying? So recognize when you're in the shit tunnel. Mm. Just recognize and be like, oh, I'm in the shit tunnel. And focus on the end. And so a lot of times people won't accept that right now I'm in the shit tunnel. OK. And once you do that, it's better because you can stop, take a breath, and you're like, eventually, I'm going to be out of this. Yeah. I'm going to be out of the shit tunnel. So I think that that's a great analogy is a lot of people, a lot of people who either stress themselves out or then end up having a nervous breakdown mm -hmm. or, you know, overuse drugs, alcohol, all of that stuff. They're not recognizing that they're in the shit tunnel. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you remember Andy was going through there, throwing up and stuff. He's like, but I got, there's I got a, a destination to get yeah, to. This tunnel doesn't go on for the rest of my life. It, there's it a, doesn't. There's an exit to this tunnel. But you have to be like, you have to be like, oh. Like, for instance, you ever been in a dream and recognized that you were in a dream? Yes. Like, that, that it's like, wait a minute. Because mm. me, sometimes I can see dead people. 
And I'll be like, oh, I had the greatest time with this person. I was like, you lost me for a minute, but I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> In dream. Yeah. Yeah. All right. In dream. Oh, sorry. Um, take I kind of set you up for that one. Too. I was going to see if you caught that. <laughs> uh, but I'll see dead people in dreams. All right. And sometimes you'll see dead people in dreams and you'll just be having a cup of coffee with them or you'll see dead people in dreams. You'll be like, oh my God, what you doing here? Like you, you gone. And then mm-hmm. those are the real conversations. So to me, it's the same way. It's like, I'm going through some shit. You might be going through some shit with a parent. You might be going through some shit with your finances, with who you work for or how the business is running. And you just have to recognize when you're in that tunnel and then focus on the end goal. Wow. I didn't know what I'd get from from our conversation. Me neither. But this is great. I love I love the direction. I learned a lot about you. I I learned um how to get some time for Tiff. Tiff time. Tiff and, time and be okay and with it. And here's the, the other thing. It, it, is this yeah you got such we've got such instant access to, to people yeah and i'm kind of like that too i'm one like if you text me i'm gonna text you right back yeah. if i got my phone mm-hmm. and it's like chill mm-hmm. give tiff some time and then uh you know that's like the shiny all work and no play makes tiff a dull girl hmm. you know what i'm saying so all work and no play You'll be jammed up. And <laughs> well, I'm all play. <laughs> well, I'm all play, play. I'm all play. Well, you know, you get that, but I love you, uh, it. you need it and uh, people need it. So, Chris, you are amazing. Um, there's so much more. Like, I this cannot be our last time meeting here. It won't be. Um, Bring me back. I know they're going to want more of you. I try to give people information in small doses because our human attention span is a little short. So I think this is just enough to make people a little hungry for you in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to know um, if if you want people to be interested and follow your journey, but you are not only just um, coaching and making organizations great, making and coaching your family and making them great. Chris is also journeying on his entrepreneurial path and we've got a family company going where yeah. you guys have seen me promoting Piper, Piper Paper. Paper. Yeah, thank you, and, Um, I'm plugging Piper Paper right now. Okay. And for those of you who know, you know. Yeah, so. Piper Paper, you can find it on Amazon. We're, 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 we're an up and coming, uh, um, Small business. Candle. Yeah, we're up and come up, up and coming candle and clothing company. But I've got a new batch of candles that are coming out soon, and it's right up the same alley that we're talking about. So we're just low level, uh, bubbling right now. It's like you turn the grease on and it just starts bubbling. And so we're going to be having some some new releases coming soon. There are mantra editions. So all of these things you and I are talking about. How do you light a candle? Like if you want a new, if you want a new relationship, I got a candle for you. If you if you want to manifest uh, a new job, we're gonna have candles. If you you want to cover your son when he goes off to college, we've got a candle for you. So that'll be coming soon. I appreciate you, Chef. And Chris is serious on that. When I come to their home, there is Dalai Lama <laughs> literature Buddhist. everywhere. There are there's, Buddhist, a Buddha, there's a Buddha right there. There's, there's, oh, I see it right behind you. <laughs> there's a, yeah. there's, there's a whole energy table. There are energy books. There are stones. There are crystals. You can smell sage and Palo Santo wood burning. The energy is so refreshing. It's so calming. Um, but seriously, if Chris says he's got candles for manifestation, Chris has got candles for manifestation. We do. And it is coming. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. this time. Hey, bring me back. I, I really enjoyed myself. I'm bringing and, you and back. And you are doing great. Thank By you. the way, we're super proud of you. There's This is just the beginning in Thank terms you. of the people that you can touch. There are so many women that I think look up to you, Thank that uh, relate to you, and you can do it. 
you can do it because I've always seen the spark and the energy in you. And when you came and said, hey, I got this going and, and this and that. And the whole deal is you just got to take some risks. You got to take some risks and you got to have people around you that you can trust. And go on and do the things that you want to do in life. So I'm super proud of you. Hold on, Christian. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chris. I I appreciate everything. Ever since, like, our kids are phenomenal together. They love each other. Oh, we just gel well. And we know yeah, that. They're, they're and... both some young weirdos and smart. <laughs> and and so smart also, oh, my God. How do we... How do we have kids that were like this weird together? Yeah. And uh jail. So it's yeah. like it's amazing. It is. Everybody remember, like, subscribe, comment, and share this video. Take what works for you and share it with somebody else. No Chris, doubt. I appreciate your time. I, we could we're definitely gonna do this again. We could talk about it. Love you, babe. I'll be back. Thank you. I will. All Bye. right.